Welcome everybody. Paint that in there. Uh, we're early, but we're late, huh? No, you're right on time. Oh, we're just great. starting right great. now. Right now. <laughs> Have a seat. Um, so before we start, though, we're going to confirm that we posted the agenda in three public places throughout town, and also on the website, and emailed interested parties. So doing that, we can legally go forward with um, the meeting here. We have um, um, some guests, Vic, and you didn't get onto the list, Ben, but Ben Falk is here, and I understand that you have another meeting at 7 that you want to go to, so you're hoping to maybe go first. If I could, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. I think it could be brief. Take it away. Good timing. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah we just... We plant a lot of trees up in my place in the North Hollow, and we have grown a lot of trees, um, and we give them away when we can um, to places where they'd be a benefit to others, public spaces especially. Um, so we planted some all up and down 100 a bit. We have some in Moortown School. Um, we planted a couple here in Rochester School, but they're kind of, there's not room. They're a little close to the playground, so they might not stay there. But um, we have a lot of good ones, and we're going to be planting a few hundred for clients. And I um, thought the north west, no, northeast side of the uh, town green has a bit of room there, which might be a really nice for, and th some of these are oak trees mostly, um, to go with some of the other beautiful trees that are in town. Um, and we lost that big, beautiful oak down by the church, so it'd be nice to keep adding more oaks um, they're great food trees for people and wildlife and they live us hundreds of years um, or we're open to kind of wherever where they could get full sun and be um, have a long life or people could you know harvest the acorns if they want to process them or just at least be for wildlife and shade timber down the road so you had mentioned this to me and I talked um about it a little bit um and frank came up with uh, the thought that the lions club park in the north end of town there which is which um has lost a couple trees yeah, along the bank and, uh, and and it has good sun and probably access to water but it, it would be um also helped for bank stabilization mm -hmm. that might be a really good good spot to, to put some yeah we're certainly open to it yeah. if, as long as it has half day or more sun and it's a pretty well drained spot even if it floods every now and then yeah that's not really a problem for a lot of these oaks that that would be a good spot i think for some because mm -hmm. the bank is like what they lost the big button up there a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and uh, there's not many trees along that the one section there mm -hmm. close to the river this is where the the nice timber framed no, nope. 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 Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, sure. There's bridge. tons of room there. Yeah. yeah. There's a big flat field. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, right down. Well, it's... there's a park right past Tim Crowley's driveway, Beans Bridge Road. Right. There's a little park down there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Just developed by the Lions Club. Great. Yeah, there's a couple of picnic tables down there and stuff. Yeah. 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 That, that's, yeah, I know that zone. That, that, sure. And you're having good luck with oaks because uh, yeah. oaks are. Happier on the other side of the Champlain Valley than you know, they are around they, here. They they will grow more on their own there without planting. There's more natural dispersion. They grow fantastically here when they're planted. When they're planted. Yeah, mm -hmm. even white oak, okay. bur oak, swamp white oak, and quark the regular old white we'll oak. Welcome quark the stuff. acorns. Yeah, <laughs> and it's nice because the only oaks we have here, and there's not many, are the red oak, and these will bear. The white oak's bearing the other years, like usually the year that the red oak's mm -hmm. not bearing, mm -hmm. which is a nice thing for wildlife. Mm -hmm. Great for the squirrels, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even turkey love them and mm -hmm. help keep bring the turkey population back. Well, we'll look forward still. to squirrels and turkey on the park. <laughs> I don't know that we need more squirrels, <laughs> no. but they, they might help. They could help with squirrels. Yeah. But especially bear, turkey, a lot of people. A lot don't of want them either. So, people so how many oaks. trees are this you're talking about? Well, I mean, we have a lot, but I think it's a you know a little bit of a project to plant. They're big trees; they're two inch caliper plus, mm -hmm. um, and uh, to to plant them properly and give them a nice big mulch ring takes a little time. So I think we just do like two or three. Um, they'll get huge, so. Mm -hmm. But if there's a lot the of room, maybe there. we can do a little more. Yeah, but, you can look at the space there and yeah. see what you think would be best. I wouldn't recommend more than five to ten at the sure. most, okay. I would think. 
in that space. I don't even know if you could get that many in there. Okay. But two yeah. Or three. Yeah. Easily. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Easily. They'll, so. They'll, you know, we've seen them within 15 years be, you know, 35 feet tall and have quite a nice crown spread. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Nancy, you got the question? Are you suggesting that you should plant them in the field or over along the edge of the river? I'm more thinking along the edge yeah. of, yeah. The, of the thing, not in yeah. the middle of the play area where people right. can, you know, yeah. recreate, play football. Or yeah, we wouldn't want them doing it in a way, not way. just because... We don't want them in the way of anyone, but we also don't want them damaged. And that's the problem. That if you put them in place for the yeah. way, they just get wrecked by. Yeah. You would. Uh, um, how do they? Uh, <laughs> how do they stand up to beavers? <laughs> Not that well. We can put what though. I I have a lot of beavers, and and if we put a we'll put a vole guard on them, which they don't really need for voles. Don't damage them, but beavers won't mess with them. Like metal window screen we get yeah. from the hardware store. Yeah, they won't. They don't want to bite through that. They don't you, like that. You probably need to do that. There, sure, we'll I do that. Notice that's some good, beaver action up above that's, there. That's that's a good, yeah, really good yeah. thought. You know. Yeah. Martha has a question. I just have a quick question. Are you thinking now, beside, in addition to the northeast part of the park that he mentioned here in the, in the village, as well as Beans Bridge, or just at Beans Bridge? We were talking more about Beans Bridge. I think we'd have to. Okay. Give more thought to adding more trees to the park or not. That's um. Yeah, and there's a little bit of a um, question of the 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 line of oaks along Route 100 if they're um. They're not contributing to the the hard grass growing under mm -hmm. there. If they mm -hmm. um, you know acidify the soil a little bit. Do you know more about that? And how. You know, I don't Christ. think oaks make too much acid, but I mean, any any tree with hardwood leaves with big leaves will snuff grass if it's not mowed yeah. up. Yeah. But um, one of those is a really significant special tree. It's a bur oak, and it might be one. Of, might be the only one on Route 100 in the whole state. That really big bur oak on the west yeah. side. Yeah. So that's a special. You know, that's yeah. like a very unusual so, and valuable tree. Um, I, I, I. Feeling like we're interested in accepting your offer of some trees out there on the, the Lions Club Park mm -hmm. along the river. Um, but while you're here talking about trees, um, maybe we'd ask you to review what's required of the tree warden position, which is currently vacant in town, and just you know to check that out and mm -hmm. see if that's something that you'd be interested in and um, put in your hat in the ring for. Sure, I'd, I'd love to. Do we have a, a, a printout, or we could get you a? It's it's more um, responsibility than I realized actually. Oh, once okay. we started reading into it. Uh huh. Yeah, Frank, uh, you've been. I, I you've been yeah, there's a, it, so. there's quite a bit to it. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea to have another party involved or not. I I have to do a little more research on it in order to, because what it does if. They made they passed this law in 2020, and what it does is it gives a lot more authority to the tree warden than what was ever thought of in the past on towns. So basically, uh, it, we really need to research it a little more to figure out what how what direction we want to go, mm -hmm. because you know there's some. The rule was definitely passed more for bigger municipalities that have a lot of sidewalk trees and trees that are, you know, planted by municipalities. Mm -hmm. Where there's a lot of issues with the rules where it could affect, you know, roadsides along the, you know, the town rights away and on roads and stuff. And, you know, so there's a, just a lot we need to talk about on that before we do anything with it. All right, anyway, it'd be um, interesting to, is that something, a printout we could hand off to him to just, so he could learn this, more about it too? This is only a <coughs> partial printout. A partial so, printout. Yeah. So so it's thing. online. The statute oh, online. is online. Okay. It is? Yeah. It can be downloaded. Okay. okay, I'll take a look. Yeah, yeah. Maybe looking for something else to do. Yeah. yeah. We That's what you get when you show up to a select board. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can do that. <laughs> All right. I think I might have your email. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, you, I can, you think so, yeah. I can so, send it along. Yeah. That'd be great, yeah. So do you want to touch base after you look at the um, 
the Lions Club yeah, Park and but, where you and think so some on, spots I've got to pull up my phone. Like, is there a way? I got by the river. That's this. That's the park. That's right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So just the west side of that. Park. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Would, I would think so. Yep. Yeah. Like we could, as long as it's away from the knotweed enough. <coughs> you know. I mean, these are pretty tall, so yep. they'll be above the knotweed yeah. to some extent. Yeah, but yeah I wouldn't. I wouldn't plant them in the knotweed yeah. anyway. I'd right. set them back. A yeah, no, bit. We'll do, yeah, we can yeah. do that. I, I know yeah. that spot. There's sun there. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. I think yeah, I would, would good. be happy there and perfect to replace another nut tree like butternut because they they yep. keep dying back. Yeah, there's <clears throat> there's like no real big trees there anymore. Maybe right. a couple up on the north end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, by the by the picnic tables or some on there. Yeah, yeah, there's a storage shed up there. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. No, that, that's a great spot. Yep. Okay. Right. So we can, should we, like, it would be this week, because I still have my apprentices here. Let's mm -hmm. just the tagging along. Um, got some labor for us, because it's a good yeah. <laughs> our work. Um, and that's okay. We can do it this week, next few days. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll try to maybe label them so people just, you know, know they're there. Yeah. And, uh, Point them out to the lawnmower. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're big enough <laughs> that you really see, said. but know that they're, uh, someone planted them. They're not just volunteers. That yeah. How old are they now? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. When yeah. we first got the land, we planted thousands of trees, and, these, and now they're, we have more than we need. Mm -hmm. So we're thinning them. Thinning them. Thinning Better them. than cut. Soon we're gonna have to just cut them to thin them because we can't dig anymore. I look forward to seeing them to see if that's that's yeah. a ten-year-old oak right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're, hmm. they're trying to cruise along. Cool. cool. Yeah, well, they do spread pretty fast. Oh, yeah. yep. Got a bunch of them in my yard. <laughs> One nice thing is, so these oaks are thrive are ready all over south of here, southern New England. So with climate change. You know, that's one reason alone to plant stuff that is from <coughs> south of here, because to be ready as, a, well, our climate's already, it's not going to shift, it's already shifting. So, yeah, yeah, our climate's already very good for a lot of these oaks. And, but the seed takes a while to get here, so mm -hmm. it's a way of, like, yeah. right. helping with that succession of the forest. Right. Helping the climate change move along <laughs> well adapt, adaptive to adapt to <laughs> <laughs> hopefully right. it will help to change itself but yeah all right great all right thank, thank you. you thanks yeah. guys yeah, yeah. Thanks. good timing great. all right um our next um guest we had um listed here is is vic he's on on, Hi there. on the zoom Hi, vic. Hi, vic. Hi. <laughs> um, this uh, there's three items on the agenda regarding emergency management. One of which is to appoint uh, Michaela Richardson. She has softball practice till six thirty, so I was going to suggest bumping these items until later in the agenda in hopes that she's able to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Was that what you wanted to say? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> pretty easy. Yeah. Right. And, and and yeah, when when you get to those three items, then I'll come back on and offer any. Okay. All right. Cool. Yep. And Vic, uh, Midge, 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 welcome. Did you have something online that you want to talk yeah. about? Yeah. Um. Thanks. Um. I just wanted to uh, bring up an, an issue that the folks on Kennedy Drive are a bit concerned about, mm -hmm. and it's something that um, I've spoken with. Um, Ray Harvey and apparently Terry and Gordon Merrill have um, dealt with a little bit, but um, folks on Kennedy Drive wanted to bring to the select board's attention that um, we're concerned about a new development at the end of Kennedy Drive that incorporates the, um, the maybe 300 plus acres that are up there. Mm -hmm. I don't even know the owner's name. All I know of is this is Dave, um, but uh, so I've never met him, or I might have met him on a dog walk or whatever. They have, he has um, a coupled with a company called Tenters, T-E-N-T-R-R, -R, that um, you, they work in conjunction with the landowner and they set up um, a tent site on platforms. It's, uh, 
they appeared to be about 10 by 10 canvas tents in the area. There's a small pod, a uh, bathroom pod, looks like a compostable toilet that's in that unit. Uh, a small table um, with a uh, camp kitchen on the end of it. There's a bit of a deck um, out in the front that allows for a couple of chairs and there's a fire pit there. Um, the lower unit, which is a quarter of a mile in, uh, is heated by gas, has a small gas unit inside of it. And the upper unit, which is a half a mile in, is heated with wood stove, um, vented with uh, uh, a pipe. And both units have outside wood fire pits that are there. And you rent this like you would an Airbnb, except it's a tent unit. And um, most of us, a, a, there are a number of people on the street that have take different issues, but the main issue that concerns us is the fire hazard, because these pits um, are located on, even though they're uh, they're a steel pit with a cover over them. The mesh, it's not a, a tight fit on the covers. They sit up on little legs, but they sit on top of a bed of dry leaves, surrounded by woodland that is also full of dried leaves and lots of trees, and brush also that they've cut down to clear for the sites of these two camping units. So. Um, the scenarios are endless to what the hazards could be as far as the fire is concerned. And Terry went up, um, I haven't spoken with Terry about it, but I did, Ray left a message for me, we were away for the weekend, um, said that he, they went up there, they checked it out, and it appears to be fine. It complies to all the state requirements that Ray talked with the state fire warden, he too said it, it fits with all the perimeters of, of the guidelines, so there's a non-issue as, as far as the state is concerned with the, um, and with, with Ray, um, he said it was a no, no problem, it was a full go ahead, he complies with everything, um, so there's, it's a non-issue. In terms of the fire? In it's... terms of the fires. Now, um, I received a message from Julie that it was more of a planning and zoning issue, but I haven't had a chance to talk to anybody about that because, as I said, we were away for the weekend. And we just really learned about this last week, and people of the, the um, street have just been trying to talk about this and figure out what do we do. And even though the state fire warden and Terry or anybody else who looks at it says there's not a problem. The folks on Kennedy Drive don't feel that way. And so we would, you know, I so appreciate the fact that they really got up there pretty quick and checked it all out. But um, we would like to have it on record with the town that we're not okay with this. Um, it is in my viewpoint, I wouldn't have even set up that fire pit in my own yard the way that they have it set up there, never mind in the woods. And there's very little, if at all, cell coverage up there. They're, they do offer fire extinguishers, but I believe they're the small ones, so they give you two <coughs> small fire extinguishers. You're not supposed to drive your vehicle up there, so anybody who walks into there to do their camping, if they have an issue while they're there, they would have to come off the hill and before they could contact the fire department. And so that is an issue. The wood lines butt up against the back of all of our houses. Um, it affects not only folks on Kennedy Drive, but um, you know, folk, folks on Wheatfield as well. 
um, that it goes, the property goes all the way up to the pier behind the Pierces. So it's a large swath of land that's vulnerable to this. And um, I know that on our phones we have, you know, you look up the weather and it'll tell you warning, fire warning within this region. Um, the, you know, wind, wind and dry conditions, not supposed to build a fire. Um, but we don't know who's regulating this. We don't know who's monitoring it. We don't know what the protocol is for going back in. Somebody has breakfast in the morning at their campsite, thinks they've put out their fire, go off canoeing, or leave the site completely. They go home. And how long is it before somebody comes back and it checks this situation? How frequently is it checked? How frequently is it monitored? And I certainly don't feel it's our obligation to go in there and keep tabs on all of this new venture. But it is a concern for all of us because we all stood last week or the week before and watched Gordon Merrill's barn go up within five minutes, and uh, the fire department did a damn good job in that situation, but it, there was no putting it out. You just watch it. And so, you know, we look at, we all have old homes, we have lots of wood, lots of dryness, and um, it's a concern I never thought we would have to deal with. And so we would just like it on the record that we're not okay with this. Um, I will continue to do more research. I have no problems with this guy having an enterprise of his own. I, I have no grudges against the situation except the fire issue. And the wood stove in the tent doesn't have a screen around the top of the cap. It's just open. Now, anybody who burns a fire knows that there are sparks that go up, and it's not that far of a distance to, and you're sitting in your tent. You do not know what's going on in the woods around you until you start hearing a crackling. There are candles that are there that are sitting out in the um, setting, you know, all to create an, a nice ambiance for the, the renter, which is terrific. But for us, it presents a hazard where we could all, we're all, all feel jeopardized by it. And so, as I said, we want it on the record that we're in, um, we're in the process of compiling a letter that we will all sign and submit to you guys so it is on the record. But um, none of us are too happy about it. So thank are you. Are they required to get a building yeah. permit? I was going to say this is um, totally <coughs> a zoning issue. Yeah, it's a zoning issue, but there's, it's, they've not um, approached. There's been no permits pulled for. I mean, it's one thing if someone owns land and they come to visit and they're going to camp out on it, but setting it up as a commercial entity, I think that they need to um, approach the zoning board about that. And that's, um, you want me a, to approach the zoning board and know this? Or, um, I mean, where is it going You can, here? but I mean, it will, um, you know, I'll bring it to their attention uh, the next next meeting. And, and I understand that, didn't we, this person, Dave, had contacted Julie at the office, did, did he call about? questions about coming to talk to the select board. I think I heard this, but and then he was referred to this is a planning board issue. We Do you remember that? We talked about it. You <laughs> showed me the letter, and and uh, I said it's a zoning issue at that point, and you called the people. Is that correct? What? That was last, time it was last <laughs> week or sometime when you showed me that letter. <laughs> wow. It's, it's been a, I know, it doesn't sound familiar to me either, and we chat about everything. Well, anyway, it's, um, <laughs> no, it's, um, thanks for getting it on, more on the radar, and it's, um, I think that's something that the, um, planning board is, 
because I don't think you can just um, Open create an enterprise <laughs> like that without, um, <laughs> there are the zoning restrictions on that. I don't think you could just even open up a, uh, um, a bed and breakfast up in the hollows without um, jumping through some hoops. Mm. So Interesting. I, I had no idea. I mean, the first thing that came to my mind was, and is that this is a fire issue, um, but apparently not. <laughs> so I have a question then. When you say you couldn't open up a bed and breakfast up in the hollow, well, how do all these Airbnbs operate? Do they come good, to good planning and zoning no, and the select board to they set just, up? No, they don't. No, but well, they're then, all over the place. But they do have legal structures that they're renting out. This is well. You think is, they're legal? Well. That's up to the fire marshal to That's determine right. whether they're legal or That's not. That's right. Um, but but this is this is a, a structure going up. But this is the same idea as an as an Airbnb, a yeah, tent well, we'll start with the or basics something. That there's a structure being erected on a piece of property without a building yeah. permit. It's just so a right. platform. Start there. Work yeah. our way up the ladder. It's just a platform. Just a it's a platform, platform. with yeah, a tent. That's, that's, uh, you yeah. can't get them for tent. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, sugar houses are taxed. Um, if if they're know, renting it out, it's a commercial this. operation. Well, well, that's where they can get them. <coughs> right. But as far as fire hazards, there is not. Yeah. We drove up there and it's those things, uh, what they got to hold their fire in is very good. Mm -hmm. And it's up in the air, so anything that falls underneath there is going to go out because the screen is so small, and it's all dirt underneath them. Right. I mean, the Forest Service allows people to go tenting out Right, in, in and they the build them a lot worse places, and they build them in stone pits, which really have a chance to make the fire go down in yeah. the ground. Mm -hmm. so, right. I mean, and in the area where they are, it's, it's hardwood, and you don't really... And as far as going down to your house, fire doesn't usually go down the hill very good. So I have another question then. If the property is in current use and you're establishing something on current use property, is that a legal issue for current use and should the listers be made aware of it? Yeah, well, it'll all, it'll all start with uh, zoning. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's all, gotta be the trigger to filter out to all of the, answer yeah. all of those questions. Well, that's where you... I mean, do they have ample parking spots? Yeah, where are they so parked? They're oh, parking okay. in Kevin Kelly's driveway. Really? Yeah, he's given them two units, two plate parking mm -hmm. spots to um, uh, to utilize, and then you're supposed to walk in. Now, we ha there isn't any evidence at this point that anybody's renting, um, but you can go online, and it's a franchise. It's all over the country, mm. and these tents are all over, and they're, it's expensive. It's $150 to spend a night there. So, um, and you, they offer you a bed, um, and you bring your linens and you bring all your food, but you, you have to lug in your water. And I'm really glad to hear that fire goes uphill. I don't know how Sandy feels about that, but well, I don't feel that great about it with our property. <laughs> no, no. I mean, we're, we're all. The only good thing is we can get a fire truck right now. Go to the zone and keep one. That's all I can tell you. You can't get it up there. <laughs> yep. You, you, you can get a fire truck in there. Before. Sure. Oh. Easily. Good. There, One, once not, you learn that the fire is there. That burned out before. <laughs> yeah, we had a fire there 10 there. years ago, or probably 15 years ago, 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, that. I don't remember that. burnt that. probably 10, 12 acres in there. Mm. Yep. I yeah. remember fighting. And we definitely got a lot better holes now to fight it than we did back in. <laughs> well, I my, remember driving the truck up in there, actually. <laughs> my goal is that we don't ever get to that point. Yeah. Carrying know, a backpack. I'm, I'm, I'm all for <laughs> just kind of living this. <laughs> well, and give the devil its due. It's very possible that he does not realize that he has to go to the yeah. board, planning and yeah. zoning board. Right. Yeah, and right. I've, I... I, like I said, I have no um, issue with him personally, and I don't wish to, you know, uh, stop this enterprise of his, <laughs> but um, the zoning is a totally different issue. We're, you know, we're... We we're, just live there. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's operating a commercial business in a non-commercial zone, basically. He has stated yeah, that he's only but, going to do the two. <laughs> but Airbnbs are exactly the same way. <laughs> yeah. True, but it's, it's a different setup. I don't see how it's that one's much different. One's outdoors and one's indoors. Yeah, really. Other than the fact that I it's under no land use. Right. So, 
you're saying this goes to zoning and planning. Yeah. So yeah. is yeah. this something again that I should take to zoning and planning, or you guys? You're welcome to the, the first Tuesday of every month. So that will be um, next week. Next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Next Tuesday. May third. Do they have to get themselves on that agenda? You can kick it off. Can't mind you. Know, you could get on the agenda if you want. Okay. Who yeah. would I contact? Who is it that? Um, Dan McKinley. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Or does okay. Sandy do the agendas? Either one, Dan or Sandy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And we'll still end up submitting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a petition good. or a letter um, to you guys and. Um, Get anybody who wants to sign it. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. No, thank you. No. So All right. That's it for me. And I appreciate your time. And yeah. Terry, I really appreciate you going up there and checking it out. It yep, no problem. Really. The guy was real good about it. Yeah. Four of us went up, walked all around. Yeah. Oh, you met him up there? Last Friday. Ray okay. and I went up. So did with he, Gordy and the owner. Okay. Did they contact you? Or I contacted Ray, Ray. Contacted me. Yeah. Okay. And then I contacted Gordy, and he contacted the owner. We okay. met. We're not. Was Gordy kind of a property manager yeah. for that? Okay. He's the uh, forester. Yeah. Is forester. The the forest forest manager All right. there. All right. Um, Thank good. you. Thank to be you. continued. Um, well, we're still. Waiting for Michaela, if we could, um, we have a liquor license application from the Rochester Cafe LLC, or actually it's Cafe Rochester LLC. Cafe Rochester. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for a first class liquor license in their restaurant. And I think they're, um, it's because they're thinking of perhaps venturing into dinners. So, um, all right. Make a motion to approve that. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's no menu here, though. <laughs> I speak it like it make a takeout order in the meeting. <laughs> no. No. Marketing. I ain't gonna put that now. You gotta wait until next week. All right, and then um, <clears throat> we're going to hold off on Michaela a little bit, and the, um, well, we could, uh, I guess we should sit there wait We should that. backtrack and um, approve the minutes. prior minutes. Oh, good idea. We have a few corrections that we found in there, but nothing that changed the essence of them, so I'd move to approve with the fixing those typos. I second that. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. Are the titles on there? Yeah, yeah we've yeah. identified them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, cool. And um, <coughs> so updating the capital plan. Have you made any progress on that? Is that the master so. one? Is this the master we're the, talking no, about? No, not the master financial plan. That was the capital plan. That seems like that's going to take a lot more work. We, we started the process, Nancy and I sat down and yeah. went through it and changed some stuff. We also contacted Kevin Geiger and got a copy of it so we can edit it ourselves mm -hmm. on oh, the, the computer. previous one that we yeah. did? Is that correct, Nancy? Yeah, that is. But I would like to suggest that because it's new to a lot of people that we could invite Kevin to come back and talk to us about developing a capital plan that we haven't been paying that much attention to um, over the last few years right. for any number of different reasons. Mm -hmm. And if he could come up and talk to us, he's certainly familiar. He sent to Julie um, a copy of the plan. Um, but if he could come up and go through it and talk about how you go about doing a capital plan and those items that are critical to it and how far out you go and things of that sort. The most critical item of it is probably... Paying for it. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. Annoying. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we always get Which is why yeah. we had some issues 
following the plan that was yes. developed. Yeah. Because we we did not have the money available to us. Would that also involve the trustees? It doesn't involve the mm. trustees of public funds. Okay. But it would involve budget and finance. Yeah. Okay. I think we've got a list on the appointments of for people to do that. I think there's one on that. There's a on that list that we're appointing people. Mm -hmm. I think there's a section on that in the back. Right there. I think that's for So Patty, we thought the that capital planning getting and, going yeah. now and, and one name we and need, having something to add to that even a skeleton type thing. Did you, did you add that it? could be ready for yeah, fall yeah, yeah, when yeah, we yeah. begin yeah. when yeah. we roll yeah. up the sleeves again. Thank you. So just um, basically the um but you know it deals with the purchase of automobiles yeah, and trucks and, yeah. and, and culverts. So that would be for so we um, who is the, who is the, what's the last name of the Kevin person that she's talking about that she wants to come speak to you? Kevin Geiger from Two Rivers. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And Nancy and I just sat down and changed the dates of the the vehicles and what was yeah, in there for inventory. There. But a we, lot of the wording is stuff that you know we never could do, and there's a lot of uh, financial. Uh, things in there that are just were unattainable mm -hmm. for the community. Yeah. So we have to go back and re just redo write, it. Review it and rewrite it. Really, well review it and places. then also it's it <clears throat> comes up against the other philosophy of of financing the purchase versus reserve accounts. putting reserve accounts and then the balance between And that's where Kevin purchase. would be very helpful to us in mm -hmm. our thinking. And because he's dealing with this with yeah. Other towns all the time. Right. Bring it up. Yeah, I mean, we're just coming out of a period of really low interest rates, which made the financing pretty tempting. Versus, you know, it's like we were yeah. planning to put like eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year in for trucks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We were lucky if we had nine thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I know. <laughs> Some right. of those numbers were quite large. <laughs> so that would be um, that. Would we want to have probably like a, a special meeting with Kevin Geiger and invite him in? With that just being the topic versus uh, just joining in a select board meeting. Everybody bring their copy. Mm -hmm. Let him talk mm -hmm. about it and make suggestions as to how we should proceed. So we'd have to set up something with him and then make sure all the other. Yeah participants can come to that. But we would like to get it moving before the next next budgeting uh, season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good kind of not just to start doing it early like we always say we're going to do and then, then <laughs> we Christmas plan comes on it. and we're like, yeah, let's do it. All right. So um, we have a, a motion put here to adopt to designate the entire Rochester ARPA award to cover government services under the standard deduction for lost revenue. We've got history on, on that. Um, this is just another formality That's, that we go to like, to say yeah. that the funds that we have received come out of that responsibility bucket. Mm -hmm. um, there were uh, Lost revenues is the is the catch all. Um, there were other buckets like for um, wages, and and this and that. But our our funding, our losses are all being put into that one bucket, which is the broader bucket with that covers most of what our suffrage was during during the COVID time. So is this something to justify our receipt of that money, or is yes. this some yeah okay. yes. So then I would um, make a motion to designate the entire Rochester ARPA award to cover governmental services under the standard deduction for lost revenue. And I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yep. Um, excuse me. Um, Dune, would this be, it's, it didn't get on the agenda, but you, we were going to, you were going to mention something about the dog stations. Would this be a good time? Um, when yeah, we're, we're um, getting, I figured when we get on to old business. So okay, don't... I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, we're still um, biding time till Michaela can um, show up. Mm -hmm. So why don't we um, see what, Joan, what have you got for us tonight? Okay, hi, um, I really don't have anything to report for. All right. All right. Fine. Then, um, John. All I get to report is the new truck went into the bodybuilder today. Nice. So the process has started. So a little earlier than we originally thought, huh? Yeah. A little bit. Expect <laughs> delivery by June? Because it has to go for a wing as well. And that's what it's. That's what's getting. They started that today. Okay. Yep. So five um, or six weeks. Yeah. yeah. June. Ten weeks. <laughs> Ten weeks. Okay. Before see. winter. Before next winter. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, well, I'd just like to. I'm not sure if. I know, or you know exactly what you did that made mud season so tolerable mm. for our town this year, but good job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. lucky. <laughs> I mean, some of the horror stories we heard from some of our neighboring towns, mm -hmm. we, uh, I think we got off easy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there were some awkward moments for a few people here and there, but yeah. It um, wasn't too bad. wasn't too bad, yeah. We were fortunate, I think. Yeah. Um, so I have a question about um, years back, not that many years, but a few years back when um, Robert Mayer was on the board, he was really adamant that we um, increase the gravel budget, you know, significantly, and his, um, um, his perception that we are really lacking in, in material on our roads, and what's your, what's your thought on that after a few years of being back on the on the well I did get it back in the last budget yeah a little yeah because I felt that we should spend that money on pavement mm -hmm. but I lost that too <laughs> I was just curious because so. um, it would seem that the the lack of a, a bad mud season is that I mean how are you feeling about the, the level of gravel on our back roads there's still roads that need gravel yeah there always will be but mm -hmm. yeah you lose a couple yeah. inches a year mm -hmm. really between plowing and dust and graphic yeah. and yeah erosion washouts and I'm comfortable with it where it is, where we, you know, where we put it to. Yeah. At this time, but as prices go up, my material I get for that money is going to decrease. Yeah. So that may have to get bumped back up at some point. Yeah. But I still think we need to spend more on paint. Asphalt. Yeah. And that's going to go sky high. I yeah. Mean, price tiny yeah. Asphalt. I think Robert Mayer agrees with that one as well. Yes, I yes. agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Um, Tony, have you got any um, reports from the library tonight? Well, we're still working on uh, research for the things that we need and maybe need to do uh, to the building. We know some of them. Uh, I don't know if anyone managed to make the uh, Wednesday walkthrough with the... Uh... We never did it. Oh, you didn't do it? <clears throat> no, uh, we met with them in the office, uh, Diane Tietzel, Jeff, and myself, uh, with Energy Megan. Uh, Efficiency Vermont. What was her name? Megan. Megan. Um, and at this time, we kind of just batted some things around because it, everything hinges pretty much on what happens with the school. And that's why we haven't approached anything. 
Uh, we talked about a lot of things, looking at this building, looking at the town garage as being two that really need. The library was something that we looked at as being uh, that we have to definitely do something with it at some point, but we're not sure how to go about that at this time. Uh, I think Jeff and, and myself both agree that it's you're going to have to do a construction deal there where you're going to have to hire an outside group that has a, a bunch of crews that can come in and tackle a project <coughs> like that. And I don't know as if you can do an exploratory on that. Uh, talking with a few other people before we even approach that I think is the way we have to handle it so I, I mean it's on the it's on my mind but we just haven't got there yet okay. yeah. you're Super saying you, it is a it is a town thing eventually right so that it'll be well, yeah there's a we put on the list that we use some of the ARPA funds I put a thing on there that that maybe we should look at clearing up the, the deed end of that and seeing how, what that entails so that that can go away and then the town would have to support the building and, and get that straightened out and I don't know whether the trustees would have a better uh, opportunity to get funding for the use of for repair of the building or whether the municipality would and that's something we need to address okay. and and if it would help if you could maybe look for that to see if you guys can get funding of some sort. That would help. Well, we have been doing that, and it's not really uh, just readily available. No, I, I know. So, Nothing is. Yeah, I know. Yep. Okay. But it's it's still there. We're, we're looking at it. I've put it on the list for using ARPA money some to do that if we could find some kind of grant that we can supplement with that too that's on the you know it's in the pipeline kind of thing so okay and the other thing I say just for now is that uh, I keep saying read the paper because they do uh, put some good articles in there about mm -hmm. this yep. and uh, Jeanette's uh, library of things is quite interesting actually if you take a look at that there's a lot of a lot of stuff there which you hope you don't need right at the moment, but uh, it's there. Uh, <clears throat> so that's that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and she has a lot of programs coming up. But right. thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Terry. Anything on your mind tonight? Got a little trouble. With the, those encounters aren't working. They quit this weekend. So the guys coming. Are these the sometime. ones that are looking for the new rubbers to work on? Or is that no, I haven't found different. those yet. Yeah. And he hasn't given me a list on the valves, and I haven't got a, we haven't got received any contract about the spring walk around, which I've called two, three times. That's supposed to be done in April. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what Terry said wasn't working right in the beginning. I'm sorry. The dosing counters. Building counters. Dosing. 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 There's basically monitors the flow into the, the field, field. The, the leach field. So they're called building monitors or dosing. Dosing. Dosing, dosing monitors. Field, yeah. D O S I N G. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Thank Correct. you. Yep. yep. Thank you. Sorry to bother you. Thank you. I just I I, I can't hear yep. everybody. Sorry. Yeah. Other than that, we're great. How about sometime we got to meet with a. Sometime we got to meet um, with the guys doing the work in town because it's going to be a, mm -hmm. lots of water lines to be around and yeah. sewer lines, and it's going to be a deal. They yeah. did a bunch of uh, uh, dig safe. Yeah. Put a lot of lines they, out there. That doesn't make any difference. No, I know, but they just put some lines out there yeah. recently, and the, the Weaver guy, I did speak with him, he was here and marked the, the ones that they were supposed to dig safe, so, or some of the ones that he knew of. He didn't have a plan, but he was just walking through, 
just upgrading the lines that they had put out earlier. So he didn't have a copy of the prints yet for this end of the job. So they were still... out at the golf course though. They're making their way. Oh yeah, they're getting mm -hmm. there. And, but he didn't have the, the print, that guy that's doing the work there. So, but he'll be getting it. <clears throat> so how'd the pancake breakfast go? Good. Yep. Good turnout. Yeah, it seems uh, like it. No, we had, we did well. We haven't got the tolls yet for, you know, we had to buy a lot more stuff. This year where we, years past, it's all been donated pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. We did like 18 takeouts, so I guess that was worth it. Yeah. But I think overall went pretty good don't you yeah everyone was really happy with it yeah. it was good to see everybody thanks for the guys giving up their easter to do it and the yeah. families yeah. yeah for sure i mean a lot of the guys that got kids and stuff mm -hmm. gave it up to do that yep. yep and also a lot of guys brought their kids it's yep. it's definitely a nice family it's a good thing and Kristen, your message that I read somewhere was extremely nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It was. All right. Um, we'll put all, those, all that money is going to go towards the new truck. Yeah. And all those kids were so cute. Yeah, we served for them. So they'll be there. Actually, better help than the grown ups. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> Um, we got Jeff Gephardt in the in the no, crowd. He's not, not, here not here tonight. Okay. All right. Um, so let's um, let's talk some about the. Um, we brought this up. Susie brought this up at the last meeting about the um, dog stations or the doggy bag stations, and um, I think it's a I think it's a good idea. Now you had talked about. Um, Putting it out there for people to make donations towards this, because what was the price that we we're saying this is going to be about two thousand dollars? About two thousand dollars. Yep. I I think that um. Uh, well, are we in agreement that this is something that we want to go forth on? My biggest concern is who's going to pick it up. Who's going to pick it up? You know, I mean that's the big thing. We're are are they going to be there to collect? garbage too you know mm. bags of garbage that's why we mm. get rid of the the garbage bag the, the cans the yeah. cans on the park because people were leaving their household waste there and, um, I don't know that's I all for putting signs out but I don't know about having to put out collection stations I, I just don't know who's going to empty them yeah, I'd be willing to go forward with one or two but mm -hmm. not really five. Let's just test the water before we dive right in and well, see if collecting what is What about if you have just bag dispensers, but people take the bags with them? I mean, that's one thing. A lot of times yeah. it's a good excuse not to pick it up because you don't have anything to pick it up with. But if we um, could put the, make the bags available without having them to obligate someone to empty the, the garbage can of it. I mean, it would reduce the cost. It would reduce um, the cost. Then the station just gets installed with a and relatively simple post hole digger. Um, and the sign is just a sign with a bag thing. Yeah. Hopefully they don't collect bags at the bottom of the sign. Mm. Use bags. <laughs> Or we could just say we sell bags at the hardware. Yeah. <laughs> hardware like free bag. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, something like that. Um, instead yet? of the, uh, instead of having the problem of the collection, yeah, we could take baby steps into I, this. Yeah, I, I think that's the way to go. I would think a few more signs posted around there, and where they're more visible, would be good to do that. Or a sign with the. The bag dispenser. Yeah, or, or even, you know, pick up after your dog kind of thing. You yeah, know? but it's uh, the whole point is trying to make it easier for people to, right, to, do, to it. do that. Right. And they don't think that, about it. Oh, shit, I don't have a poop bag. 
Yeah. You'd be surprised how um, it would work as a hand warmer in the winter when you could do that for a while. Yeah. yeah. But you want good bags. You got to tie it down. I'm joking, but it's true. Mm -hmm. It's a big dog. Yeah. Um, excuse me, could I could I ask her just one thing about this? Um, the information that Susie gave me. We were trying to figure out what to do about donations, and we had thought in the article that I was going to write, but we held on to, to until you guys finished this, um, your approval of this. We couldn't decide whether the donation should be sent to her or it's possible, I talked to Dune today, um, be sent to the PO box at the town office. And if someone on their check puts in the little left-hand corner on that line where you can tell what it's for, they could put, you know, dog station or pooper scooper station if somebody wants to make a donation. But the yeah. check should be made out to the town of Rochester. Would that be correct, or what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think that would be the way to go to send it to the town. Yeah, Susie had a comment. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, initially, I, I'm feeling quite confused because at the last meeting, uh, there was you proposed, and there seemed to be general approval that it would be. Uh, quite easy to deal with the pickup because all of these properties are town properties and they're maintained year round um, through summer, spring, winter and fall by mowing and plowing and that they would... Well, that was put out, you know, when it's... Um, that was just an idea, we, we not, weren't sure. It's not, it's not like someone plowing is going to get out of the plow and grab the bags and bring them into their tractor with them. It's not... Could have just left. It's a, it could have just left. Uh, yeah. um, you know, that's what we were um, struggling with, actually, was who, how would they get picked up? How would it be emptied? You know, is this, um, you know, who, whose shoulders does that fall on? And I think that um, expecting volunteer force to do it is is asking a lot i mean basically we're asking every dog owner to be a volunteer and to, to pick up after their own dog and then if we could it seems that so what we're talking about tonight is just to make it easy by having the bags available would be a good good first step versus having a pile of full bags you know frozen in a heap in the winter and stinking up the park in the summer you know because it's not going to be um i mean it doesn't take very long for a bag of dog shit to start mm. smelling you know but it keeps your hands warm <laughs> it does that's <laughs> a little obvious yeah. to, your, to your skin but that's um um but yeah we hadn't we had to come up with a, a real clear solution about who would be responsible for. for you do understand empty. that this is a 10, ten gallon receptacle. This is not a right. Big, so it's a, so it's a significant thing. It's not just you know it's you know we don't don't have one. So ten gallons of dog bags would really start stinking in the summer. You know, I mean I think we really need to you know do what we can to encourage the dog owners to take care of it themselves and then by giving them the tool to do it would be a good good stop but not not a place to to dump it you know i mean whether they walk over to the skip mark and throw it in the garbage can by the can or they take it in there and take it home with them put it in your pocket and yeah. go <laughs> Forget it and do their laundry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wash, their, wash their clothes with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Okay, so so I'm getting a sense that the general feeling is is really it, this is ultimately the dog owner's responsibility and. Yeah, we don't we don't have someone in line that to be that we could saddle with, you know, emptying this. You'd, you'd think that you'd probably. Once a week would probably be too few of a time. So I mean, in the, in the hot summer, it's just and then if you want to, you know, bit of the build up, and then and invariably people would start throwing other garbage in those things too, more than likely. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. That's You'd my get all kinds of garbage. And don't they yeah. have to be cleaned? Wouldn't they have to be kind of cleaned or sterilized or something? So. Yeah. Yeah. I would think yeah. so. 
after a while. Well, and, they, have yeah. line, they have a line or bag that you just right. take, you know, yeah. you're not throwing, throwing the loose feces in there. Um, yeah. I think we just start out with the, like you say, you guys. The bag receptacles only. Yep. Or bag dispensers. Bag dispensers. Not receptacles. <laughs> dispensers. <laughs> dispensers. And, uh, and, and, and then they're on their own. Yeah. yeah. And putting yeah. some more signs up around? Yeah. Well, one with the dispensers. Right. One, one is placed behind something. You said that one of the signs was not visible because it's. It's down at the corner. Across from the garage, mm -hmm. it, would make more it just sense needs to, to go it. out further. There's one on the park, right in front of Huntington House. We we should probably put a couple more on the park. I would think, especially on the front. The street, yeah. I think if especially you attached on one to the bandstand, that wouldn't be the worst idea. That's where they all seem to. There's a lot of signs around the park already. I know, converge. but I yeah. think you have to put one out there. Um, on the because that's where a lot of people they'll stop on their way with the dog and they'll let the dog out of the car yeah. and they go out on the park. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's no sign that's reminding them to pick up after themselves. Well, then, I don't know if most of them can read. If you go down the tennis court, the guys park right in front of that sign and they let the dog out and it goes. Yeah. Right. And it's the same guys. I can give you about four cars. <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> but we should it's speak to them. Car. And one of them, my two or three times a day. Still go inside yeah. the house. <laughs> <laughs> but they should be spoken to or you get a letter or something. Like the puppy. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're the dog warden. <laughs> <laughs> you can write a nice letter. <laughs> so, um, yes, so how many? Make a good dog warden. Well, at this at this point, then it's it's it's. Um, will involve a lot less money, a lot less uh, of everything. Yeah. So what I would like to propose is, um, ultimately I feel that it, it's really a, a, t a town responsibility because we're dealing with the, with the, uh, the aesthetic and the health issues that, that are in town. Personally, it still um, doesn't hurt to have the, put it in the paper if people want to contribute to, to donate towards that that um that fun but i agree it's um you know we've i mean we've gone as far as putting a few signs up as this extra step of a couple more in the in dispensers but it would be a lot less expensive probably wouldn't it do you know a price of just the bag dispensers uh, it's essentially this is the it's a little bit less it's the exact same structure without the the attached uh um mm -hmm. I mean, they probably just hook right up on the sign post. Yeah. Yeah. The sign, I think they should just be under the sign. Right. Yeah. Well, well, you're talking about something completely different. Then that's that's this is a unit within itself where it's got the it's got your metal post and the sign and the dispenser attached to it. I don't know that you can just buy a dispenser and put it on your own pole. I mean, that's just a, that's a whole other. Uh, Avenue of research that would have to be undertaken. Yeah. I would think you we'll dig into it a little bit and, and see. Yeah, if, yeah. It, if they are like that, Susie, uh, um, find out how much they are and let us know with that. And right? Then, and then once Three? you see that, you'll decide how many you'd Maybe like to four? Have. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, we One, I think we can decide on how many we need minus, now. We're not talking two, mega bucks four. here. Right. Yeah. Right. We could get more bang for the buck here, like. Yeah. Well, it was like they came in units of five. Is that what you're saying? Singly, they 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 they, they, uh, they do do some bundling. Um, the uh, major difference in cost of, is is that. With each additional unit, if you buy a bundle of five as opposed to a bundle of four or a bundle of two, they increase the amount of bags they give you up front. You know, mm -hmm. they'll give you twenty four hundred bags to start or something. Yeah. Um, but what I'll do is is uh, I'll see what the other options are and I'll I'll uh, write that up and give it to Julie. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. 
So no Michaela yet, eh? Yeah, she uh, she said she was coaching tonight. She wasn't sure if and when. So uh, if we could go okay. ahead on that action, then uh, then you know, yeah, I think well, okay. I, we do know that she is uh, willing to take on that um, appointment as the Rochester's emergency management director. So I would move to appoint her as that. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Michaela. Uh, coaching. Before you move on. Um, so we should just wait until um, the next after the next meeting to put out something about that we're trying to do this. And no, no, we can put that out now, even if we don't know exactly what the, the yeah, what the cost is going to be. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, we sorry, can, Patty, what? It, it'll also help us determine, you know, what to do, what to spend on. Okay, and you want me to say that. People should send donations to the town clerk for the yeah. invitation that is for this purpose. Yeah. Excuse me, I have that separate article that he talked to Susie about, and I was going to hold it until next week after I heard what you talked about today. So um, I can edit it to make you know it whatever you'd like to say. Like just it's going to be just bag dispensers, not dis not deposit places. Yeah. 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 And then that I can have, it, have them send donations to the town if you'd prefer that to the P.O. Box yeah. town clerk's office and write on the check in the lower left-hand corner that it's a donation for the dog station. Yep, that sounds good, Marsha. Is that okay? So that, that can run in next week's paper. Unless sounds you, good. if you have any changes, I no. can let me know. But, um, okay, it won't, it, won't run this, it won't run this week. Okay, all right. The dogs will run though. Um, <laughs> so we've got the... Um, we have an updated local emergency management plan for 2022, which is some um, something that we need to um, approve and we adopt it or just approve. It has to be uh, approved and uh, and then sent to uh, Kevin Geiger to Rivers by yep. May first. Yep. We do this every year. The only changes from last year: a couple of uh, phone numbers and name changes, and also identifying Michaela as the emergency medical. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Cool. So, so um, it is updated. Yep. So I um, move to approve, update, and approve. Uh, Nancy, you have a question on that? Does uh, Michaela's appointment also include the regional emergency director position? Yeah, that's automatic. Goes with the position. Yep. Okay. All right, and along with that approval, we also have to approve the local emergency management plan municipal adoption form for 2022. Basically, that's just what we have to fill out to adopt the, the plan, I think. It's the same as last year, just to yeah. agree. Yeah. So we move those two things. Yep. yep. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and... Um, an old business also we had the review of the master financial policies i had just a couple things what a couple of typos but uh we in section three the cash receipts petty cash and return check policy the authorized personnel it didn't in include the fire department in the list of of uh things that are Entities. Entities. Mm -hmm. And also the proper payee section should include them too, I think. Those were two of the things that I took out of that. And you can see that yeah. by reading yeah. that yeah. paragraph mm -hmm. there. So I, other than yeah. that, I didn't find some, but I think that... Um, Barb got a copy of this too, right? Am I correct on that? Mm -hmm. And we she, all did. Yeah, 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 everybody did. Did, 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 did. she bring out a meeting? Okay. Doesn't she? Yeah, she. They don't have a meeting until next month, I think. So I think they're right. gonna. She was gonna read through that. So we'll just keep this on old business and keep picking away. But um, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah I, a, I didn't see anything yeah. else that was major. Yeah. I, I saw a couple of charts in there, but I didn't understand yeah. them. Yeah. So, I'll let somebody else think of, think about that. <laughs> okay, so, the, um, 
these are the forms for the emergency management plan. And we also, did we have, um, second constable is still vacant. We don't have, um, and the uh, tree warden, I guess we can hang on that and, and, and then, you know, see what the interest grows. Yeah, we, on that. we need to get a fuller copy of yeah, this. Yeah. And you guys should read it to see what you think. So uh, we've. I mean, I, yeah. I, I personally think we're better off being served by the select board on that, but yep. you guys can okay. read it and see what you think. Um, so but we're adding a capital planning committee to the appointments. Is that we should. what I'm reading? And then right now we have under there Greg White, Barb DeHart, Nancy Woolley, Lois Bond, Julie Smith, Kristen LaPelle, and the select board members. Yeah. Anybody else? You probably don't need any more right now. But no. If you want to add people, you can do it. Yep. And because it's a committee, it does fall under open meeting law, so yep. meetings yep. will be yep. warned, warned and, and minutes will be taken. Yep. yep. All right. So I'd move to make that appointment. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, picking away at that. Um, all I see is we have some some bills to sign, and then we're um, going to have a brief executive session to talk about employee issues. And unless anybody else has something to talk about, anybody in Zoom land? Martha's on meeting. On meeting. Nope. Nope. Nope, I, all right. She's on mute and talking, but she looks like she's all set. I'm sorry, excuse me, now I've oh. unmuted myself. No, I was just moving moving my mouse along so that I could hit the leave when you were when you were done. Because oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. It's all good. All right. Thank you all. Okay. Have a good, good evening. Good night, guys. Yep. Thanks.